Hey guys, Kavit here and today we're gonna build another Raspberry Pi project. If you haven't checked out the previous one, click on the link that pops up right now. So today we're building a simple hardware-based customer feedback system. Customer feedback is an essential part of most business operations. Knowing if the customer was happy or unhappy about the company's products or services is of utmost importance to the company and their growth. Our system consists of a Raspberry Pi connected to buttons which the customer can press to let the company know about their feedback. This response is then stored in a separate database. We also use an LED matrix to add some aesthetic value to our project. Things you will need. Three pushdown buttons. Six male to female connectors. Four female to female connectors. A breadboard. An 8x8 LED array driven by Max7219. A Raspberry Pi. And a power bank to power the Raspberry Pi. Since I'm using the first generation Raspberry Pi and I want to make the whole setup portable, I need an external Wi-Fi adapter as well. Step 1. Set up your Raspberry Pi with the latest version of Raspbian OS. I am not going to go into the specifics of that because you should be knowing how to do that if you're trying to do a project like this. Step 2. Software. I have fast forwarded the whole coding part for the sake of time. So I've posted the entire code in my GitHub account that you can access with the first link in the description. Now let's get into the coding. First you import the required packages. The first three are for the basic customer feedback system part and the rest is for our LED matrix and its functionality. We first set the GPIO pins on the Pi to follow the Broadcom standard. Next we set the pins 18, 23 and 24 to accept input signals from the buttons. We then create a database called feedback.db and create a cursor for it so we can use it to perform database actions later. Let's create a table using this SQL command create table. Now type these next two lines for the LED matrix to work. It won't make much sense right now but it will after we change some settings in the Pi. For now, just copy them. Next up, we create a function to insert values into the table as and when we get new user inputs. Next, we create a function to show stuff in the LED matrix. This is essentially the quick stats view that we will be implementing. That is, we have a third button which when pressed will display information on how many good and bad reviews the company has received. We now have an emoji function to display a happy or a sad emoji with colon and brackets to add some aesthetic value to our otherwise seemingly boring project. In this emoji function, we change the rotation to have a vertical emoji since that looks better. Hence we do the whole device equals max 7219 thingy twice. Once to rotate the display by 90 degrees and display the emoji vertically and the other to rotate it back to normal once the emoji has been displayed. Next. We create a function that defines the mode in which the user or the store will use. It's filled with simple if-else conditions, function calls, simple SQL queries and a try except block to handle the keyboard interrupt gracefully. We then create another function to view the ratio of good versus bad reviews. It's essentially just an SQL query and printing the retrieved values from the SQL query in a neat way. We then create a viewDB function and use ifelse conditions to go through some simple database viewing SQL queries and call our previous functions to do the same. At last, we have the main function wherein we have the first major menu-like system that enables a user to either enter the user mode or enter the database viewing mode or to just quit the program altogether. We're finally done with the coding part. I know it went a little too quickly, 
but I did not want to make this video too long and boring. Hence I am focusing only on the superficial features and not the nitty gritty details. If you are pretty familiar with working in Python on a Raspberry Pi, then most of these lines will make sense to you. If not, you can google the meaning or go through some of the reference sites that I have listed in the description below to get a better understanding. Now let's move on to the hardware part. Before I get into hardware, I am going to SCP the Python script from my laptop to the Raspberry Pi. I do this mainly because I like the Atom text editor on the Mac. You can use the Vim or Nano editors on the RPI directly as well. It all boils down to personal preference anyway. Step 3. Hardware There are various ways of using the breadboard and sharing the ground line and stuff, but I am not too much of an electronics guy and hence I do not want to get into all of that. Thus, I have used 4 of the total 5 available ground pins in the Raspberry Pi to connect the 3 buttons and the LED matrix. First, hook up the LED matrix based on this pin layout. Next, connect all the 3 buttons to their respective GPIO pins and an empty ground present in your RPI. I have connected pin 18 to my bad button, pin 23 to my good button and pin 24 to my view stats button. Step 4. Now that we are done with the wiring up part and the coding part, we need to make some system changes to allow the LED matrix to work. So for that, let's head over to this site that is linked in the description and copy paste this command to check if the SPI kernel driver is enabled or not. So if this is not the result of the above command on your Pi, then follow these steps that are on the website. I'll show you how to do it anyway. Now, Reboot your RPI and try the lsmod command again to see if you get a response similar to mine. Install the dependencies for the LED matrix library with these commands. Next, use this command to install the latest version of the library. Now, you are done with installing the libraries and are ready to start running our program. Step 5. The fun part. Now if you navigate to the directory where your python script is and run it, this should be our output if you followed the steps properly. This was a simple yet fun project to do. I had some issues with the LED matrix interfacing at the start. You might face the same issues as well. If you do, browse through the links in my description and read them thoroughly especially RM Hull's GitHub link. Read the documentation to really understand how the library works. Before asking doubts in the comment section, please search the error or your doubt online. Someone somewhere would have already fixed it. If you still have some doubts, ask them in the comment section and I will try to answer them. If you have some suggestions for me or would like to see some other addition to this project, mention it in the comment section. Thank you for watching and I hope this video imparted some kind of knowledge to you. See you in the next video, goodbye.